Welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say my special guest this week is the one and only Frank McAvenny, a man who kicked off his whole career at St Mirren, West Ham, Celtic, uh, played for Celtic and West Ham uh, twice. And of course, I think you finished off with St Mirren as well, Macca. Um, great to have you in the studio. 12 Thank grand, you. 12 grand well spent. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, we That's go, extension gone. Well, exactly, we go back such a long way. Um, yeah. But I think the one thing that will rile a lot of footballers mm -hmm. um, is the fact that you never set out to be a footballer. No, I didn't. I didn't. But yeah, you know that was. Uh, I did a twelve job before I played. You score much Celtic, and it was great. And any days everyone played in the same day, Peter. So my amateurs, juniors, professionals all played Saturdays. You know there was none of this fighting for TV rights and. And the Celtic game got cancelled, and that was it, you know. <laughs> and and some of my pals for the Milton were there. And um, my kid was standing outside the Apollo member of the yeah, Apollo. absolutely. So I was going around to bookies, because I was unemployed. I was going around to bookies. And I thought, oh, see if I can win some money and get my pals that night. And, and they said, come and have a game. And my says, a couple of boys are not turned up. Come and have a game for us, I'll get you a couple of beers. And I thought, well, that'll do for me. Yeah, you must have been half decent at school, though. Well, I, I played in the primary. I didn't play secondary. I played in the primary and we won. I played my brother's team two years above me. And we won two trophies, and it's only two trophies they've won. So, um, but I wasn't, I was, didn't, wasn't interested, if you know, I didn't think it was good enough to be for a start. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> to get, I, I don't think I'd have, I'd have made it if I'd have been through it at an early age. Why not? I wasn't very good with authorities. Yeah. So well, it's something you've managed to retain throughout your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have something. Can you imagine me? In the days, you had to, you know, I was a good guy. She gave him my boot boy. He used to do my boots and I used to give him money and all that. And, used, and I was, these kids are coming through and, you know, and I was nice to them all. Yeah. Can you imagine me getting somebody that was a bit of an asshole? Is it fair <laughs> to say your natural ability then? Well, I used to play down at a, a school in Milton. And it was red ash. You know the older boys, they used to say, because Kenny got brought there, the yeah. Douglas. And they used to say, Kenny couldn't get a game for him, he used to put him in goal and all that. <laughs> <laughs> usual, the usual, right? So, and I'm playing there, and, and you learn very quickly with this red ash, it doesn't get rolled. If you don't control it, these boys don't care and they'll just come free. So that's where I learned to get on my touch and all that. So, yeah. obviously, I was learning all the time. How did you like living in the Milton? Tough area to, to grow up Tough in? Tough area, but I loved it. I mean, honestly, it was. Mum would get them, the neighbours would look after you, and it was the days that they looked after everyone, that everyone looked after each other. And it was great. I loved it. Wouldn't do it now. Yeah. I mean, you leave the door open, you're, you've got nothing left when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, are, there are good areas. There are oh, good yeah, areas. I'm not talking. Areas everywhere. Yeah, but, you know, it's yeah. a scheme that a scheme you wouldn't think, you know. Yeah. Um, well, it's what you're brought up, it's what you're yeah. used to. I didn't, I didn't have a problem. It was great. I, you know, but I was I was nineteen, Peter, when I got the chance to play football. So yeah. I decided I was I was going to take it. You know, but sometimes when you get that little moment mm -hmm. um, when you decide, okay, I'm uh, I'm going to play football, you're spotted by a scout. Mm -hmm. um, boy, was it a great time though, because mm -hmm. you end up you end up going to St Mirren. I mean, St Mirren are a great team. Great team. Well, the problem is I was going to Thistle, but the wonderful Bertie Old, God rest him, told me I wasn't good enough. <laughs> By the way, don't worry about that. He told Ruffy he was not oh, good enough for about no. ten years. He told, he, told, he told me years later. Told me years later that he, he thought Ruffy thought that the nets were for stopping the ball. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever pick him up on it yourself? Yes, of course. By I way, did. you told me I was not good enough. Of course, I did. Every time I seen him. Yeah, but that you know that that inspirational moment, or you get that. This is my moment when he took me off it for whole. And I was uh, sitting in the bath and he came in, told me I was not good enough, not big enough, and I was thin. And I say, he says, you're not good enough, son. I says, I'm better than anyone on your team. That was my exact words. Yeah. There's a few swear words in there as well, I think. Um, and he was talking to me and I just put my head under water. And that was when I decided that I was going to make it in football. Yeah, so he gave you the perfect incentive. Yeah, so then, and then I went to St Mum and... Yeah, it was great. I got sent off. I had two games, two full games. They done it right. Betty put me on a sub, took me off, and you know, put me on as a sub as a trialist. You don't do that. So yeah. they gave me two games, and then they flung me into a game, the Renfrewshire Cup final. Uh, uh, man against Morton. Morton. Yeah, there was a big crowd there and all that. And I'm playing. I played midfielders, you know, at the time. So uh, 
playing against this boy and twos are at it and twos get sent off. And I thought I'd blown it. But Jim Clooney, who's the manager, says, I knew you had the ability, I didn't know you had the heart. So that's what got me signed. Yeah. And then he gets sacked the following morning. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Long, Jim. Yeah. He never even seen me train. But by the way, even better than that, though, I'm, I'm talking about the calibre of. Oh, you, you, you must have you must have uh, shown something. But what about the players that you joined? Well, well the players that I joined were great, and I, but I thought I was training Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I thought you know I was working on. I thought if I'm going to have a go, it was late. I was 19, you know, if I was 20, and I thought if I'm going to have a go, this I've got to do it now. Yeah. So I spoke to my parents. I was living at home at the time, and I says, look, I've got to have a go at this. Um, and they couldn't give me any more money to go full time. So Tony Fitzpatrick, the wonderful Tony Fitzpatrick, he came and picked me up every morning, took me training, brought me off. He was a postal. Yeah. You know, it's the only thing I've ever got off somebody for postal, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you his I'll give you his Twitter account later. Yeah. Um, um yeah, so that's that was it. It was um, Tony picked me up, took me in. Did your mum and dad make great sacrifices though when well, you they were they were they they understood that I couldn't, you know, I was I couldn't work and and I'd done that. And it, but it wasn't, to be fair, it wasn't long. It wasn't long. There was a few injuries. And you're talking about the midfield. I played in midfield. It was Tony, Lex Richardson, Billy Stark, um, Billy Abercrombie. I mean, it was Scanlon. It was yeah. incredible, you know. That is some team. I loved uh, Scan. I thought he was Aye, brilliant. It was incredible. Big Starky. Me and Starky played at one side. And you played number eight? I, no, I played in midfield. Proper midfield. I mean, me and yeah. Starky were playing... Uh, <laughs> We were double figures every year. You know, mid midfield, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, we were, it was great. I mean, playing against, I mean, that first time I was there, this St. Man team were great, you know, and it, it was Jimmy Bowen, who, you know Jimmy, right? Yeah. And I hated him when I was at St. Man. I thought he was, why was he doing this to me? Because he kept bringing me in. After tra you know training, yeah. it more mean you. And I'm going. I thought it was a punishment for some. He's a senior player. Yeah. But it wasn't. He was teaching me. You know, he was. For some reason, he knew I was going to play up front. Yeah, but Jimmy could hold the ball up. He was. Well, he knew. Well, he was the same sort of age as me. But he, and he's going. You're going to play up front. I'm going. What? And, he, and it was like. And he was teaching me how to jump into people, how to get fouls, just things that people don't talk you through. You don't get taught that. Yeah. So um, he was teaching me all that. You know, and it was great. And. It, 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 set me in good stead, you know, when when I did move up front, he knew I was going up front, so then it, he got dropped, thanks very much, Jimmy, <laughs> he, yeah, he got dropped, on. Right. but he was he was finished at the time, so it was me and McDougall, Frank McDougall, it was great. What a front line with Frank. Oh, oh, Peter, it was brilliant, we played fear not, and the funniest thing I've ever seen, you go over there, we, we get beat one hour there, and we went over to fear not, and, and it was magnificent, but you go out on a Tuesday, before a game, you know what I'm going to say? It's a game on the Wednesday. <laughs> games, games on the Wednesday. You go to Tuesday, you train on the pitch. Yeah. Right? You go to train on the pitch. So there's three big sort of a, you know, like big holes in the middle of the and it's tough. And it's where you come up the stairs, you know, from the dressing rooms are all underneath it and all that. So we come out this one on the Tuesday. And uh, everything's all right, everything's great. And the Wednesday come out, two's come out the middle. <laughs> two's come out of the middle. So we, it, was, it was the left hand side. This one here, we come out on Tuesday to train. I mean, dressing rooms and all that. And uh, anyway, the game kicked off, and McDougal got in it with somebody, and he's effed and he gets sent off. And he's giving it to the crowd, he's giving it to the referee. Everybody's getting it. Cruyff's getting it. He's nothing to do with Cruyff, he's shouting at him. <laughs> but he's walked down the wrong stair. Right? <laughs> You know, I've got, I'm playing against Cruyff and I've got tears in my way. He must have thought, who is this character? <laughs> but I know that gate shot. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to come back up. He's got to come back up. It was hilarious, Peter. I'm chasing a ball and the crowd were roaring and I knew it was there for me chasing his ball. <laughs> McDougal's trying to sneak along his side. <laughs> uh, you got to laugh. We get barred. We get beat to nothing, but it was good fun. Yeah. But we got to Europe every year, which was great. Yeah. And Frank, I mean, it's. <laughs> you, is there a... Is there a sense sometimes when you know people that you've played with in the game and they pass away and you just <laughs> you realise the whole mortality of yeah. you know what you're going through and, and how you're yeah. reaching your latter years? A lot of people I know couldn't mm. speak highly enough of them. Oh, McDougal. Brilliant. I was I was doing his funeral. I uh, went to his funeral a couple of weeks ago. It was um I can't just love the guy. He's just so such an unconscious comedian was. You know, he was just 
that the dressing, king, that the dressing room was some uh, oh. area for patter. I mean, I mean, I had McGarvey and he hated Billy Abercrombie. They too used to fight like that. Aye. Aye, I can see, we can see Abba no liking McGarvey. <laughs> 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 Abba was great. Abba was brilliant. But I mean, Lex Richardson, what a player he was. Yeah. You know, and, and Tony. And then, you know, that was the three in the middle. And then you had... Starking up, but that was why I got in because Tony could have played down oh, south. Well, he did good in the Bristol, yeah, didn't he? He could have been at a higher level. I thought. I think so. I thought he was a good player. I don't think if he wanted to, I don't think he was committed to good in there. So yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was. They, some of them got injured. And that was the only reason I, I got a game. Yeah, and, and by was, the way, at that time, which a lot of people won't know, is you had red hair. I know that. No, it's not much that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was ginger. As soon as I got a good wage, off. Time to get to blonde. Aye, oh aye. Yeah. Changed um, my life. When you were a ginger, I always remember it. In, uh, Don't go on it, but it just I always, always remember it in Toledo because that was the the halcyon days. Still a ginger, believe I, it or not. When I thought to myself, <laughs> <laughs> I thought to myself, I think I better get Maca a taxi because he's going home on his own. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, always... How did the move come about? Because you're banging in goals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's St Mirren who were a good team but playing in Europe. Alec Miller come in and he changed the team, wanted to change it. He got <laughs> first day he came in and says, I'm getting ready. He can make me to go over Chick Charlie. That was a good I used to pick them up in the morning. What a car that was. There was no politics in that car, I no, can tell you. I was just about to say to you. <laughs> so it was great. And uh, and he get ready. Alec Miller come in and says, Get ready, make, make to go and all that. And he said, I'm bringing in good pros. Did you know your days were numbered? No, I he wanted to keep me, but I knew I was going. So I could have went before that, but I knew spoke. I spoke to an agent at the time, and I was bumming my door, and he says, yeah. "Look, we'll sort it out." So, but it was funny. He says, ah, "I'm bringing in good pros," and he's one morning I walked in and he brought in <laughs> Jim Rooney and Brian Gallagher, and I was like, "When he cast more, he come, and he's like Miller's face. They're Ross and McDougall." <laughs> 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 that dressing room just went from carnage to, to higher carnage. It was it was brilliant. Yeah. Great dressing room. Stevie Clark was in the dressing room. He was there. Brilliant. Just shows you. I mean, honestly, oh. you've you rhymed off players there mm -hmm. that were just technically good. Yeah. yeah. Great players that would go on to other, other clubs. Mm -hmm. Stevie, of course, to Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And from your own point of view, was it Bill that said to you, look, there's a sniff here from West Ham? No, or? I didn't know anything about West Ham. It was Luton. I was yeah. going to Luton. And I went away down to Luton. And luckily, the wee guy... Chairman of Luton slapped me in the back of the head and says, Welcome to Luton, Maka. And I thought, Who the hell are you? And he says, eh, I'm the chairman. I looked at my agent and I says, Nah, because I was going to slap me, it was very so slap. I was going to put a heed in him. I was like, yeah, I didn't know he'd do it. So uh, I looked at my agent and then Alec Miller panicked. And because all the, all the directors and that came down, all the lawyers and all the money came down getting Luton had paid that. I think they were getting a wedge. So they were getting a wedge. So they, they noticed me, I was, I was like, I was ready to tell them. And Alan Miller says, can you not tell them tomorrow? And I says, why? Well, he says, so we get it. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have to pay for it. And he says, and by the way, West Ham want to speak to you. And I said, well, when did that happen? He says, we gave David Plate the first refusal. So, right. so I met John Leo and Eddie Bailey at 2 o'clock in the morning or something at, at Toddington service station on M1. Did you immediately like him? Oh, brilliant. What a guy. And as soon as you speak to him, he's like, big boy, sit down, football. Just, I felt sorry for David Pleat because he was a good football guy. Yeah. He was a great guy and he was on the phone to me. And I know he shouldn't, but he was on the phone to me. And I would and have done well at Luton if it wasn't for him, but West Ham's West Ham. How did he sell it? Was there one specific line that you thought, he's got me? No, you know, it's really. the old Tom Cruise you had me, I, you had me yeah, at a lodge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, really, he just told me what he wanted me to play and what, all that kind of stuff and what, what he foresees me and his team. And Who was their team at the time? Oh, the Barnes and all that. There was a few of them there. There was a few of them. Uh, no Barnes, what you call them, the guys up front, Steens and all that. Yeah. There was a few of them, Mick is Hartford. For, is this for Luton? Luton, aye. Yeah, but what about, what about West Ham? You oh, must God, have known. Even, uh, Billy Bonds and... You know, Billy Boynes, Alvin Martin, Alan Devonshire, you know. When I went to West Ham, I mean, no, before now, and it, it got me through the door, you know. I says, even a joke knows West Ham won the World Cup because yeah. there was three of them, wasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. There was three West Ham players, so that got me. That was me fine. Yeah. You know, Martin Pierce, Jeff Huss and, and Bobby Moore, so I was delighted with that, you know. And well, t tell me as a footballer, you know, there is always that, <clears throat> feeling everybody thinks professional footballers are oh, all mega confident. Mm. What's it like for you walking into that dressing room? Can you remember walking into that dressing room for the first yeah. time? Yeah. Scared? It took me about 10 minutes to get over it, aye. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> you're, com you're completely dispelling uh, any uncertainty. Uh, I, went, I went down there. I went. <laughs> I went down there. It was great because I went down there and I spent a couple of weeks in London first, and I went down. Went to live, went, went to live aid. I went to live aid. Went to live, went to live aid, yes. So I went down, I thought it was starting to train the Monday, and me and my pal, Faye uh, Johnson, were right back. Yeah. Uh, we, we drove my car down, and I thought it was training the Monday, so we went down the Friday to go to live aid on the Saturday. Wow. And uh, and I was in the train until the Thursday, so I came back up the road with but it was good. It was. It was. We went and got knocked back for Stringfield. It was Saturday night it after must live. Be the one and only time ever. Yeah, he never, he never let him forget that either. So yeah. it was good. But I went to the Hippodrome. That was brilliant. It was good. Good who, fun. Who is your, and I digress completely because you've taken me down that road. Who was your favourite act on the day on the Saturday at Live Aid? A Queen. Yeah. Queen, I got by by Country Mail. You know, because they were really disbanded and and they just came together. That and then I went to see them. Wembley following you, 86, oh, unbelievable. Magnificent. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask you about that at the end of the programme as well. Um, <clears throat> you've got me thinking, oh, I didn't know you were going to Live Aid. So mm -hmm. you go back there and you train on the Thursday. <clears throat> was Trevor Rookin still there? No, no. He was, he was about the place. Billy Bonds was the man. He had two testimonials. Yeah. He was, he was there. And, was uh, Cotty there at the time? Cotty, yeah. Tony was a wee bit, it was Paul Goddard and Tony Coy. That was the strike force. I was playing behind them. Wow. Never worked Peter pre season. Never, 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 never won a game. Yeah. So, um, first game, we played the Orient. Oh, no, this is how serious it is. Playing the Orient. And uh, we're getting bars for you now. It's Orient, second division club or something. Yeah. Well, the doors get kicked open at half time, and I thought it was the directors, and they're telling everyone, shove John out of the way. And uh, telling everyone how to work. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I take a bit serious. I was, I was a stupid, stupid jock. No? <laughs> everyone's just sitting like that. I didn't know who it was. It was Paul Gardner. It was one of the ICF, one of the big leaders. <laughs> told us, all, gave us all, gave us all for, for, for calling rights. What been, a fan! I just walked and kicked the door. <laughs> well, in. One of the what you would one call of, the, the ICF in a city for one of the big guys. He's and, the um, nutter element. Aye, of it. aye, yeah. they were. They were, he came in and he just called his, uh, and it was, and John Lyle got up and he says, well, um, he's not far wrong, is he? <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. And then we went to, we went to Holland and made a good trip in Holland and then we came back, first game of the season, um, we could beat 1-0 with Birmingham and I was playing midfield and Paul Goddard got injured 15 minutes to go and, and uh, I went up front and then Tuesday night we played QPR at home. No, not for him, but Tony scored two and Paul, poor Paul never gets his place back. Wow. So, um, and from it. there, was there, a, was there a chemistry that clicked right yeah, away? Because yeah. every, every Hammers fan well, I speak to talks, Cotty, McAvoy. Aye, it was, it was something that's never going to happen again. We, we, scored, we scored 54 goals between us. Yeah. Not one penalty. In that season? Not one penalty. In, in that, that season? Aye, in that season. Wow. No, we scored over first it. season? In first season, yeah. We scored 28 goals and Tony got 26. So we're... Well, challenging it, so it was great. Not one penalty we took. Did you like him as a person? I like him. Tony was on the phone yesterday. I'm going down there, yeah. Yeah, but I hang about with mates and I don't know. Oh, no, no, Tony's, like Tony's a good lad. He's all right. He's all right. He's yeah. a good fun. He's a wee busy. He's a little bit like yourself. Yeah, and uh, he's a duck on the diver. <laughs> yeah, duck on the diver, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Try to make, he's always trying to make my money. It's good. Yeah, and, <laughs> and with that in mind, behind every two strikers, there has to be a midfield that's. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, what changed their team? That's the truth. We got beat by Luton, which is a bit sad for me, but. And then we got a two each draw against Liverpool, and I scored two, which was brilliant, scoring against Kenny. And Hanson was brilliant, because they didn't know how fast I was. You know, they hadn't. Worked it out yet. Worked it out. So it was, uh, it was good. And, and then we had a meeting, because we knew we had a good team here. You know, you know. Yeah, and I had a meeting without the, without, no, without the directors, without no director, without the management, no staff, just the players, and we we sorted a few. Things. You know what this thing that they're doing now, the high press and all that. We yeah. done that back in the eighties. That was me. Whenever I went, that was a trigger for everyone else to go. Yeah, I know, Maka, but you know what it's like. Everybody thinks that there's no football before. Oh, I know, the but, the but the thing is, that was when and Tony was a lazy little shit, to be honest, and he'll tell you that. Yeah. So when I went to the fullback, because there's not that many good fullbacks of it. Yeah. So they usually give me back or put it in the stand. So I'd challenge them. If I thought I could get it, I'd go. And then everyone had to push in, so they didn't have an easy option to pass it to the midfield. All I wanted, Tony, was to get the goalkeeper because in the days you could pass it by the keeper. Right. And Tony would 
Oh, Tony wants to do score goals. So we had a wee disagreement on that, on that meeting, but it was, we were all, it was constructive. And I told him, just move your ass. So basically. it was a free-for-all and you were allowed yeah. to say what you thought? So, well, there was nothing, nothing personal. And I said, you can't let me go and, and break my ass and, and you leave the keeper opened. You've got to close them down. Yeah. And, it, and it, we went an 18-game unbeaten run after that. Incredible. It's incredible. It's broke all the records at, at West Ham. And the defence were great. I can not take I mean, taking our applause, it's me and Tony, but the defence went mad records for unbeaten and all that. So yeah. it was good. It was uh, no goals going in. It was great. Yeah, keeping clean sheets, you're scoring goals <laughs> and no telly. I know. It was great for me. I mean, I could go out the mm, weekend. Nobody knew. It was, yeah, they lost the deal or was there a ban on the deal? Pierre, they were talking about 100 grand or something. It, yeah. was, it was embarrassing. So it was a blackout. Yeah, it was a blackout. Which, so there was, there was ways you could get it. Now, the home games, I got the tapes and all that kind of stuff, yeah. but the uh, people up here couldn't see it. So it was, I'd scored 11 goals by, I don't know, whatever, before I get, I had 13 goals and I got picked for Scotland. Yeah, I can remember, and I don't know if you remember, you'll remember going on it, right? But from, from our Wogan. point of view, no, forget Wogan. Before that, I can remember somebody walking you across, uh, across London the bridge. bridge and saying, do you know who this guy is? I'm and, standing and there. The, the male they asked me not to say nothing, because you know me. Yeah. Adam says, you, when the guy says, you are a joke, and Adam says, <laughs> you talk to him. <laughs> but they asked me not to say nothing, just stand there. Yeah. So. And I remember the, 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 the female pink, pink going, jumper. I have no clue. Pink jumper. Right? Yeah, did you? I'll leather you for I that, by the way, right away. Right. See, I could be, I can get away wearing. <clears> so, yeah. at that Carry point, off. they didn't know you. No, they didn't know me. They are a big guy with a beard. Mackie Dugan on that. Did you go on Wogan? Uh, towards the tail end of the season? No, just before I made just before I made my debut for Scotland. I was right. still on the blackout and I went on Morgan because How I was... How did you get on it? Because I was just getting picked for Scotland. They says that I was... Dennis Law was... They says I was comparable to Dennis Law. Right. And the only reason me and Dennis get any comparison to is like long sleeve jerseys. That's <laughs> about <laughs> <laughs> He was I mean, we, we like we like the two. You get forty to two is like that. Don't know why. After you scored the goal, aye. Yeah. So it was it was one of them. So um, yeah, it was good. I get the chance to go, and it says it's Friday. Twenty three million people, Peter. It's incredible. Oh, it was well. phenomenal. Um, and I said to John Lyle, and he says, well, as long as you don't get involved, in it, you know, in the the green room. I said, yeah, yeah okay. Right. I said I won't. So I went with Dennis. And it was brilliant. It was good fun. Dennis is a good lad. Yeah. What I was he like? Who were you on with? Tennis law and some of the young ones were on. Oh, right. They're fucking nut. They're smashing through walls and all that. Unbelievable. They are crazy. So it was, um, yeah, it was good. But I was on with them and Dennis. And, but Dennis is, he came away on night terrace. He came away from Manchester. He got trained down from Manchester. He forgot to bring an R pair of shoes and he's got a hole in his shoes. Right? So he's got his suit, but he's forgot his shoes. And uh, he says, soon I cross my leg, just give me a knock. Yeah. So I don't want anybody to see my hole in the shoe. Yeah. I said, right, okay. <laughs> Didn't sound too clever there, but you know, you know what I mean, a hole in the shoe. <laughs> we'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was it. So um, I said, right, okay. And then as this went on, as this went on, <laughs> sorry, as this went on, I said, uh, Dennis is sitting there, Morgan's just introducing us, and Dennis is Frank. Don't worry about it, he says, there's only 23 million people watching this, don't get nervous. I says, Dennis, it's not me, it's got a hole in my shoe. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was quite, Fine. I looked, I didn't think I was nervous, but I looked like a wee frightened boy. Yeah. And I was Peter, I had this carte suit. Yeah. Grey carte suit, grey carte shoes, carte socks, yep. shirt, tie, the whole works. I get, got it, I got it. Did your mum keep it? No, I got a freebie, that was good. I got to got stuff off carpet. They gave all your gear? Oh, you? don't worry, Brad. You <gasps> know me, you know me. I love you, Mac. I you, know, you know me. Did you like Wogan? I like him. I like him. He was good, but yeah. he, uh, there was a couple of times I was going to interrupt him because he was saying things about St. Mum as a, as a place. Yes. And I was going to say... It's Paisley, your chip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, but I thought, no, 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 no. I better don't do that. You know, that's like capital punishment, that, isn't it? <laughs> so, he's, yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> so, that was it. Done that, and the first... St. Greaves, I'd done that when I was in the studio, and yeah. it was brilliant because nobody knew me, but then we met Billy Conley on the show as well, that was, if you remember that. Billy Conley came out at BBC as we were going in. Right. And the guy says, oh, Billy, and he's going, hello, Frank, how are you doing? And uh, he says, oh, you know, do you mind doing a bit? No problem, no problem. And he says, you know, top goal scorer, yeah. He says, do you know who this is? He says, of course I do. You, Michael Vanny, <laughs> <laughs> 
fucked me. Brilliant. But I see, Frank. <laughs> I was like, you know, he didn't really care about press. <laughs> he absolutely wound them up. So it was funny. Uh, Saint Greavesy. Did you know from Wogan to Saint Greavesy? Did you did you then realise that your life was changing? Was well, that night that weekend? Um, I, I played on Saturday. I was in Stringfellow's I was in Saturday night. And I was, uh, <laughs> sorry, I was, there's a recurring theme here. I, was, but I used to go there all the time before I went anywhere else. So yeah. it was good. I, I liked Peter. You know, I liked him a lot. I. Peter, he took me in and introduced me to Jack Nicholson sitting there. You know, I was going sitting there, Jack Nicholson, Johnny Depp, you know, Jude Law. I'm like, you know, John Hurt, well, oh, why? What is, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, nobody bothers me. But he says, honestly says in the documentary, he didn't want it, no footballers ever allowed in his club. He didn't let footballers in until I come in. Is that right? He says, Frank, he says, he come in, he was talking to a doorman, you know me, I told you everybody. Yeah, you're friendly with everybody. You're friendly, you know, it didn't <laughs> cost you nothing. Doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, and, and, and the funny thing is, and I'd probably I'd have lost a lot of money on it, if I'd have taken a bet with my mates and said, Frank, come on and name drop non-stop, but it was all guys. Aye, Your know, first four names here, you've just I mentioned know, world superstars in the, yes. in the movie industry. You know, and of course, mm -hmm. you're young, you're blonde-haired now, you're scoring goals in yes. the park. Um, is that where you met your first wife? First, second, eh? <laughs> There's a couple of them, yeah. <laughs> we need to go there. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, I met... Well, I can't remember, sorry, is that back at that long ago? Eh? No, the first one was up here. Yeah. My son, Jake. And so I got my son, Jake. That was, that was a good thing. Yeah. That... She wasn't bad. I, mean, I can't blame her. It was me. I was terrible. Yeah, because the thing is, yeah. when you're absolutely at the top of your game, I, mean, it's yeah. I know, you know, I met your son, Jake, and I know you're very, very proud uh, of him. Mm -hmm. Um. But when you get down there, it's bright lights. It's oh, it was incredible. It was, but it's party being... Go you are single at this point, though, aren't you? Yeah. When, dinner? Yeah. No, no, no. No, no you eventually. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. no, I'm down. I, I loved it, dinner. I loved... I bring a bit of the parties. And you get invited to open the envelopes, and every time you go, it's different people you meet. So yeah. up here, you used to go to parties, and it was always the same people. It was always the same. Yeah. How are you doing? All right, Peter. <laughs> yeah, it was always the same. It's funny you saying that because when when um, when I used to, you know, obviously we've known each other since Paisley and in, mm. in those days. But you're right because when I used to mm. go out in the town, I explained to people, I, I met Mac everywhere, Aye. and they're like that. What? And I went, well, Monday we'd go to Toledo, Tuesday you maybe go to East Kilbride, Wednesday you're in the Cotton Club. Oh, yes, I did bother me. I used to go to the place that gay one and. Bennett's, Bennett's, Tuesday night, it was a straight night. Bennett's right? was a great night. And a great night. Great and night. then Wednesday, you'd go to the Cotton Club. Yeah. And I'd see you there. Mm -hmm. um, and then Thursday. Friday, stay then. You'd, you'd be, have to stay mm -hmm. in, you know. Um, which which obviously, people thought was out of the time, but obviously, I was only at five days. Which obviously gave everybody else a chance. <laughs> <laughs> obviously gave everybody else a chance. I, know, I, only, only, I, was only, I only stayed there. If I was only at five days. <laughs> When you, uh, mm -hmm. when, you, and, and again, you know what it's like, you'd meet all the same, I mean, yeah. be like Colin Bars there, oh, <clears throat> three or four other boys really. at the end of the bar who really. were hardy boys I know. that we all knew. I know. I know. Um, so it was great, but London's a different kettle of fish for you. Brilliant. Well, I got to know all the, all the boys as well, didn't I? Yeah. I got to know, I was going out all the time, and uh, well, on the Saturdays, boys were all married and all up here. Yeah. You know, and they used to say when we're having a night out, it's Frank going, no, he's going up to Scotland. No, they used to say, <laughs> <laughs> so the covers. I used to go, they are covers. So they used to say, no, no, Frank's going up, because they know it could, like, it could be a three-day event, you know what I mean? It could, so, turn, out, <laughs> it could turn into a three-day event. So. so you managed to score, um, you know, prolifically for West Ham. Yeah. Um, how did you meet Jenny? Uh, did you meet her your first time there? Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I met her, it was the second time I really got hold of her, yeah. So it was all right. She couldn't understand what I was saying, which is great because yeah. you can imagine the things I was saying there. It's the, it's the real. You can imagine it. You know when you get down there, Peter. This is just. <laughs> I had to slow down and, and you speak to people and, and that glaik gl look in the face and yeah. and they go, yeah. And I knew they didn't have a clue what I was saying. Yeah. So I used to come out with a few extreme words and <laughs> Jenny would just know, go Jenny, along with it. She's like, she's like, some of the things I used to say. I told her after it, and she was like, "You're joking." <laughs> <laughs> It's the recipe yeah, for a great marriage, isn't it? <laughs> or not? It's good. Listen, Jenny was all right, five years, but she, she turned into a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you're at West Ham. Mm -hmm. Things are going really well. What was second season like? Second season was all right, but it was they they brought in <laughs> they brought in a guy called Stuart Robson, 
Um, his manager or player? Not a player, but oh. Stuart, I worked with him at Talksport at one Aye, point. Aye, but yeah. he, was, he was at Arsenal. And he wasn't, he wasn't for me. He, he, yeah. used to, he was an Arsenal player and he was a good player, but he used to stop the ball. And slow it down. Yeah, slow it down, and I'm making runs, one touch, and I need one touch and two touch. And, yeah. And it never came. And, you know, we used to do this exercise at training, Peter. I've never done it. And you used to. If you don't pass it, if you don't run, make, a, make a, an option for the guy. Yeah. It's a free kick to our team. Well, it's simple. It's simple. No, but all of, a sudden, simple but all of a sudden you're going, what? And it just kept stopping it. And then all of a sudden you're thinking, this is when 10 minutes because people are yeah. moving. You know, and, and it's it's very, it just gets into your head. And it made an offer. You don't, many times you see people <laughs> firing it and, and they just stand there and admire it. So how long were you there? I was there uh, nearly two years the first time and then four years the second time. Yeah, seeing that at that end of that two, second year then, mm -hmm. did you know, look, I want to go home? No, Celtic came in. Celtic was the only team I'd leave for. Yeah. It was the only team. Because I got asked to go to uh, Italy a couple of times. So you don't get asked to go to Rangers as well? Nah, well, Graham asked me. Um, but listen, it was, Graham, I knew what Graham was doing. I shared the room with him in the World Cup and I knew exactly what he was doing. And fair play to him, he wanted to get rid of that sectarian. And it lasted for about a day, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it lasted for a bit. But it was one of them, I knew what he wanted. But I'm saying, you know, it's nothing to you do with religion, I couldn't. You, you couldn't survive but, it was a bit, but even me, I hadn't been at Celtic that time. It was West Ham. Yeah. So it wouldn't have been as bad. But he says it had to be me, uh, Mo or Charlie Nick. Three high profile Roman Catholics. Yeah. And I, I said, no, it's not me. So I said, no, I, I just quit. My dad comes and watches me on the tail. I can't say I'm going to Ibrox with a priest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Take a collar off your gun. At that, at, at that time, it would have been mighty. Aye. So, you know, because my, my dad worked in the, 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 the church and the social community. Yeah. Right. So they, they used to, I used to go to the games and they get it for. Tickets for nothing. Mel, I get it after I'll take, but yeah. please go to it, but players don't. <laughs> and on that point, so does Bill McMurdo phone you up and say, listen, by the way, Celtic are in? I, they phoned up and it was, uh, yeah, well, John says, I've spoke to Bill, he's Celtic in with you, and I, I told him, I said, well, Bill knows. I said, well, wait and see what they've got to say, because obviously I'm not going up there for nothing. Yep. And uh, knowing so what I'd heard about Celtic, so. Yeah. But they were great. I was talking to Bill, and he's talking to the old biscuit tin board. Remember him as well? Yeah. He's a business now. It's, I mean, yeah. And there was a lot of pressure because he needed I've to get heard, somebody. I've not heard anybody in the, in the last 10, 15, 20 years say, you know, I was promised this and never got it. So it's obviously sorted itself out. But yeah. I just got promised something and I never got it. And and I, I and it was hard because I came up here. I loved it. I thought it was here to the. To, my career finished. Aye, I thought I thought that was what it was. So what about that move then? Did you like Billy? Oh, I loved him. Oh, he lifted that big trophy. I mean, what can you love? And I loved the fact that you walk about Parkhead, Lee Jimmy's coming out and Bertie's coming out and yeah. Bobby Lennox is one of your coach. You know, talk, uh, Jim Crane's walking in. You know, like, ah, John Clark, nearly mocking me. <laughs> nearly mocking me. Brilliant. You know, um, so yeah, all these legends are walking about. And, yeah. You know, so you, if you think you'd get above yourself, you know, when I made my debut for against him, so Billy asked me to stay behind and let the team go, and I'm going, no, I want to go with the team. Because I knew the fans wanted Charlie Nick back, they thought Charlie was coming back. That's right. And, uh, and I'm going, no, no. And, and as I'm walking out to go up my own, we Jimmy appeared, you know, and just get my cuddle, and he says, just enjoy yourself, wee man, wee man. <laughs> He's there, and I was yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, you know what, that, that's what Celtic, that's what. It, that's what it is. You know, did that's you, the kind of club it is. Did you sense the pressure of the need for you to hit the ground running? Because that was a big year. Oh, yeah. I, I knew Big Billy said to me, you know, just do what you do. You know, I, I didn't know. Thank God he never told me because he had put a lot of pressure on me because he was fighting with the board. And apparently, me Tommy Craig and I was saying that Billy fought and says, he'll win his league. And, you know, and that's a big statement for... It wasn't half. With the Rangers boys that were there. God, so I'm glad I never heard that. Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> if, you, if you think St Mir was a good side, what a side you Oh, going. brilliant. Well, the thing is, Billy said to me when we were talking, <laughs> brilliant, he says, you know, Rangers are buying all the superstars, the big internationals, spending a lot of money and all that, bringing them up to Glasgow, so we've come in for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he said, no, I didn't mean that. I meant we're coming in for Celtic supporters. Yeah. Somebody that knew the club. Yeah, I said, you should have started with that, you know. Yeah, not put <laughs> so as much great. pressure on me. So it was, it was great. Paul, was great. But I loved him. I loved him. Who loved did you like in that team? What a team. Paul. Paul Tom, was, for Tom, me, Paul, Paul was a genius. Tommy Burns was just 
magnificent man. I'll never forget a cup final with Tommy. And he's sitting, he's miserably crying, they're sitting apart. I'm saying, what's my? He said, 100 years will be remembered. I'm like, you know, it's, it's an incredible state. When that, I've got shivers going down the back of my neck now when I'm just thinking about that. It was yeah. incredible. That year was... It was ins it was inspiring. It was it was incredible for Big Bully. <gasps> I'm so pleased Big Bully won it. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm and pleased. of course I I love the line from Billy Conway. He says that season he says you went for a pie in the ninety second minute because you <laughs> yeah. knew you knew there was going to be a late goal. Oh. My God, he's left it late. I know. Well, we didn't know. But see, that's people keep talking about how fit they are now. Yeah. We've never run them in the ground. Yeah. You know, I don't see many boys in the house running around Strathclyde Park. <laughs> yeah. You know, trying to get around the freezing cold mornings. We done that, but just to get our stamina on. And it was, it worked, you know, because we, we pounded teams in the last couple of minutes, you know. Yeah. It was good. And of course, you, 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 had, you, had a, you had a partnership there which had, was three pronged at times because. Well, Mark Dingus as well, wasn't it? Mark McGee and uh, Andy Walker. Dingus was, um, I didn't want to play anyway, so he, you know, he, uh, he was great. But he came in, it was he was getting on, I think, I and mean, that's what Billy says, like he wanted a, a focal and they spent a lot well, a lot of money to tell me, hundred grand or something. So it was good and and I was good for Andy because it, Andy didn't realise, you know, I, I I was pretty good in the air because of my height. Yeah. You know, I could I could spring. So it was um, he got a lot of goals off him. Of all that team, mm -hmm. uh, there is there is one man that uh, uh, you know as well as as Tam who, who I loved and we, mm -hmm. we were all good pals with him. McStay was oh, the top drawer, wasn't Paul, he? Paul, while McStay was saying to me, he couldn't understand. He said Paul was shocked when I was saying that he was world class. He didn't know I thought I am. And I was like, what? Just, it, it was simple for me. The game's simple, and when I'm playing up front, if I came short. But my pace that was frightening. So when I came short, if I got the bot feet, I knew the guy was near me. Yeah. And if the guy Paul used to stir <laughs> up his fingers, and I used to just bring him short and spin, and Paul used to put it out of in his space. So all of a sudden, I've got him more turning there. Yeah. And it was just easy. Apart from simple. The cup, <laughs> apart from the cup, well, of course, it's complicated sometimes by players mm -hmm. uh, and managers. Um, if that, apart from the cup final, which I'll talk about mm -hmm. in, the, in the culmination of a, the, a season to remember, is there one specific game where you just think, uh, well, of course, we've got to talk about that. I know we've got to talk about that because you know, <laughs> you right now, well, let's let's just let's just crash <laughs> in on it um, because yes. uh, we've had name dropping of movie stars. So let's have your version of yeah. the infamous game at Ibrox. Mm -hmm. The only one thing I would say to you is. <clears throat> there are some games in life that stick in my head between Celtic and Rangers. Yeah. That game, obviously. And the other thing I always remember about that game was when Richard Goff equalised, uh -huh. it's the, one of the biggest noises Aye. I've ever heard yeah. at Ibrox yeah. because they, they were just not fancied to get the win mm -hmm. or even a draw because yeah. they were down to, I think, nine men. Yeah. Um, so when he scored, the place went bananas. Yeah. But the game just lit up because of you. Well, I thanks very much for that. It was, <laughs> it was I don't do the warm ups and all that. I didn't do all that. But yeah. I, I done my physical stretches, me and all that. And that's what I done. You know, I think you train all week for the for the game, and I'm ready. You know, especially when it's raining. Here, but you know, I'm like you go out there and run about, and you get yeah. soaking. Come back in, you go back out. <laughs> ah, your hair, <laughs> my hairstyle, right? <laughs> so, so I have a cup of tea and then the physical would stretch me and twist me all over the place. So I was ready and and uh, and getting on. I never get a gaffer, honestly. Don't get involved. Fourteen minutes later, Pierre <laughs> sent off. <laughs> and I get, don't know him at that. It was for a push. It was, you the, can't the, push the referee Duncan never refereed a crop game again. Yeah. So he, he lost the plot. She was said to us, "Do you know what it was? This is what happened before the game. I said, boys, get fire in the goalkeeper and the Gorham, God rest him.' I used to say, fire in him, and I used to go and bang him, just yeah. knock him right in the net. Yeah. Well, I done that with Chris. You do that with Chris Woods as well. I done that. So the ball came over. Big Roy's fucking floated up. Yeah, I've went for it. And he's seen me coming. He's tried to beat his knees up, but I've smashed him into, into the, the net. Yep. He's put the ball round the post. Duncan's gave <laughs> gave a, a corner instead of a free kick. Yes, he's on tangled in the net, and I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, and that's how it started. <laughs> and so Chris is shouting at me. <laughs> And Terry Boots is shouting at me, and I'm saying, I'm saying, turn me, go and put a bandage on. Nobody cares up here, and all that. And <laughs> we're having such a good, you know, I'm having such a good laugh. This is my first game at Ibrox. Not my first game because I played there with Simon. But you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and I've always just stick off him anyway. So 
It didn't bother me, but that was it. And then the next one, I went, and Chris could have picked it up, and it would have been finished. But he never. It was as if he was oh, waiting for you. Waiting me to go for it. So I went for it. And as I went for it, he picked it up, and he's trying to give me one of them, and that's when my hands come up. Yeah. And uh, then all of a sudden, it was a big mayhem, and Rob would try to hit me over the top, as, you know, and I thought, time to get down, because I've seen all my mates were running away. <laughs> it just shoved you out there. Right? Like, I, well, see, <clears throat> me and Chris were backing off. Yeah. And it was finished. And then Butch came in and shoved me. Yeah. As he shoved me, I came back in, and, and then Rob would try to punch me over the top, which covered. And uh, so that was, that was it. That yeah. was it. I'm looking, I'm looking at Granny and I run away. And I thought, time to get down, so, yeah. so I was there on my own. <laughs> so, so I went down and all of a sudden, we just said, oh, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. What did Big Billy say to you after it? No, he was, he was like, he knew it was, it was, Big Billy's been involved in some games, hasn't he? Oh, well, racing, so, racing in Argentina. Well, I mean, but Celtic Rangers yeah. games as well, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it was nothing. It was, it was totally shocked. And the only problem I, I think, think it was because of who I, I was, I was a big name come up to Scotland and, well, do you know the other thing about it, which you, you, you obviously you'll be well aware of at the time, which not a lot of people will be aware of when they think about, okay, you were sent off and two Rangers players get sent off, but it was in the middle of Thatcher's Britain. Yeah. And yeah. Thatcher wanted to make an example of everybody yeah. because there was a wee, she really wanted to kind of a hammer down. Do you think that's what it was for that? I oh, thought... I, think, I, I think there was a real desire mm. to, you know, make well, an example. I think that the people that, I think the police, listen, the police should never get involved in football. You know, the yeah. police get involved in that pier, and I keep saying, I keep waiting to pull up because, you know, as Johnny Watson quote, Frankie Boy didn't do Scotland, it's global. I went, yeah. the world, it's the first time in world football yeah. that the police ever get involved. So I'm at court pier, I got a week off training, which is great for me. Yeah. They like training, so I got a week off court, but we're all there. But the thing is, we <laughs> sell taking rings, they sell one going to get me a barrister. Is that right? They want to get me, I was getting Jimmy Farrell. And the three Rangers boys said barristers, and I'm saying, whoa. As soon as I actually phoned me up and said to me, I'll get you, he was laughing. I said, I'll get you one. And I said, no, no chance. And he says, no, I won't do it through Rangers. He says, but I'll take, you can't go, you can't get a lawyer to go up against three barristers. Yeah. Because it was a nonsense, and I, I, I really appreciated the green for that. It was great. Yeah. But I just twisted <clears> the scenes and went in and said that Rangers had offered me to get me a barrister. And, when I told that Billy, Billy went upstairs, like, you know, yeah. obviously you, changed. Did you think you were going to get charged? No, with, with, with that? No, no, no chance. No. <laughs> I thought it was, I was in the pub, I, I was in the house, having yeah. a party, and Big Alan McKnight was there. And Billy says, <laughs> who's with you? I says, well, there's a crowd of people. He says, you need to come to Billy's house. And I said, I can't drive. I've been drinking. He says, who else is there? I said, Alan McKnight. He says, tell him to drive. Don't care if he loses his license. <laughs> 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 he says, to take me to meet Len Murray. Yes. Len, brilliant, great lawyer. Yes. Celtic, man. But he was a lawyer for the three of us, for the four right. of us. Right. And he had uh, to take us in one at a time. And, uh, and were, you, were you scared? Or, I mean, nah. you, did you laugh at the end because... I was laughing. I was laughing all the way through. I couldn't, I couldn't believe this was happening to me. Yeah. I thought it was honest. When I went to Bella Houston to get charged at the police station, I thought it was one of the crazy. I thought one of the crazy. Behind me, there was that yeah. many press there. Because you forget world football. So when I went to court, we couldn't leave court here. Yeah. So we're in there in Bill's there all week. We're in there all week, and, and Bill was we're having lunch. You know, we're all having lunch, going f fishing the Friday. Good fish. You need money three of them had a clue. But my mother's going, no, no, no bother. <laughs> You're so, so it was one of them. Um, it was one of them, and we went in, and we thought, sitting, because we're all pals here. Yeah. We're all we are pals. Don't get me wrong, you know, the two jails are there. We will kick lumps of each other apart, but after we'll go for a beer. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the way it was. That's the way it should be and the way the fans should be as well. And, I, you know, sitting having lunch and all that, and the general consensus was, if one's done, we're all done. Yes. <laughs> Terry Butch, yeah, Chris was guilty. <laughs> Terry Butch are guilty. Francis McIverney, good Sunday name. Um, not guilty, and I'm supposed to be laughing. <laughs> and Chris is in the dock and he's going, you effing started <laughs> Wee guys banging the wee guys, he's banging the hand. <laughs> and Graham Roberts, um, you know, not proven. He didn't know what it meant. He's prod man. He's going, what does that mean? I says, you know, it was you that can't prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was that. Uh, it was good. It was good fun for me, but it wasn't yeah. good fun if you know, because poor, poor Terry and, and uh, Terry Butcher and Chris get criminal records. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, the the ultimate for me for that season is 
it's a sunny day. It's the Scottish Cup final. Well, before that, Peter, the biggest day for me was going back to Ibrox. I mean, I scored two when I played Rangers the next time, but when we went to Ibrox... The second time? Yeah, uh, it, was, it was frightening because it was great. We beat them 2-1. We thought then that's when we won the league. Yeah. You know, you just sense. And it was great. And it was just one of the moments they scored that was brilliant. Yeah, he hit a rake, <coughs> didn't he? I think Andy Walker scored with his left shoulder. No, I was like rogue ahead of the <laughs> half. Andy didn't yeah. know what it was. Andy says he meant it, but you know, yeah. all good strikers are going to see that. And the cup final, Dundee United, sunny day, S superb. The Hearts was good as well. Hearts was good as well. They kept yeah. singing Hearts, Hearts chorus. Time every time we'd done that, we scored. So it was, <laughs> it was a bit crazy. You, did you think you were going out then? No, really. I never, never once. No, no. no. I was having a. I was actually having a shocker, to be honest with you. And the manager went and took Andy off and that's and brought Mark on. Yeah. And I thought it was me coming off because I was having a shocker. And uh, Mark says, Come on, keep going. And I says, Come in here. And he says, No, you Gaffer wants me in the right. And I says, You come in here, I'll get right. Yeah. And I went I went out right because of my pace and that and I, it was me that floated the ball over and Henry dropped it. Um, bang go. Yeah. Thanks, and, Henry. And the uh, and the cup final. Again, <laughs> strange situation, wasn't well, it? Big Roy just get just get booked. <coughs> Kevin Gallagher ran by him again and he couldn't touch him. Yeah. You know, so what a finish, Kevin. But and it was great. And, <laughs> but then we scored. I mean, we, we, we worked it well. Rogie put it over and Hegarty was waiting in the ball and I just came in behind him. Yeah. So it was a good equaliser. I mean, you, you actually see me saying to Paul, let's get a winner. Yeah. You know, and you actually see me saying that to Paul. And, and of course, I said to the referee, how long ago is this a minute? And then we got to the corner and we drove. Well, what, well, what, we worked it. We actually worked it for a bit. Yeah. No. What, Joe Starkey shot you? I know. Joe, Joe <laughs> must kicked it. Starkey hit his shin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I put it over the keeper. It was brilliant. But I knew He's a Frank McAvenny. I'm not necessarily accurate. Yeah. This is for the benefit of... But there's other shins out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the benefit of Joe Starkey. Yeah. And boy, you took it well. I mean, mm. best day of your life. Brilliant. Until the night time, it was a shocker. Yeah, <laughs> Just, yeah. We got broke back down the earth with Celtic. <laughs> Party. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, it's champagne. Celtic champagne. It was a worst. It was like vinegar. <laughs> and glasses of wine. We had to go. We ended up back at Thomas's. Yeah? We ended up back at Thomas's. Me and a couple of boys went out and uh, got some company and back at Thomas's and we had a great night. It was good fun. With the company? Oh, aye. For single boys. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. For single boys. Huh? It's a great story. <laughs> ah, it was good. It was, yeah. it was, but you know what? I'll, I'll get to tell you something you don't, people don't know. If I had went to a replay, it was one of right, and that's why it was Jim White. I don't forget Jim White was on STV and he's going, oh, the boys all love Macca when they come off the bench at the end and jumped. This is all I love Macca because I scored the two. It was not too right. If I had went to a replay, because if I went to a replay, Scotland were playing. Yeah. The week after. So it would have been two weeks before the replay, right? Yeah. We were all going to be on holiday on the Tuesday. So you needed to score? Five, I had to score. Five, five as we're going. Plus we Bully McKinley. Yes. For Dundee United. He got money a match. <laughs> Probably Bully, well done Bully. <laughs> so we went, we all went on holiday, didn't we? You can imagine every night we're applauding, well done Bully, money match. <laughs> yeah. And if you hadn't, got, and if you had, if I had got it replay, you wouldn't have lost your money. You would have got, lost my money, yeah. lost everything. So all the boys who jumped told me, that's all the ones that was going on holiday. You know, other boys, it was great. What a time, we had three places in Spain. <sighs> Met Ben Medina, Marbella, yeah. and Fingero names? Fingerola. <laughs> I, I organised the game, I shouldn't tell you, I shouldn't tell you, but I organised the game against the police in Marbella. Yep. And they says, we play? And I says, yeah, but I want an apartment, three bedroom apartment for the five weeks so we could keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> we beat the police. We were, I fell out of the car like Arthur. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Can you imagine that nowadays? Alan Rolls Royce, he dies Rolls Royce. I fell out of the car, didn't I? <laughs> Brown, Brown. What a holiday that was. You can imagine, Peter, five weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Five weeks, it was brilliant. Um, but listen, you do, you do know we're going to have to do another hour at some point. Oh, no problem. This is part Come one. On. This is part one, because I'm thinking to myself, no, you got I've, 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 I've got his career now. I haven't got any notes, because obviously I know you so bloody uh, well. And I'm thinking to myself, Fuck me, we're only at the fucking, we're only at the fucking centenary and I haven't even got into it yet. Okay. And I've got five minutes left. Ah, that's all right, bro. Uh, so, listen, I can go anything you want, I'll come in. The, the, at that point, um, you've won the league and you've, mm -hmm. you've won the cup. Things are going well. Mm -hmm. um, when did it all start to kind of disintegrate? First, it started with my first um, sign-on fee. 
and he's taxed me. And put it kind of, you know, Mr. Holmes, what happened was they offered me money that was on it with Sam, and I said, why would, you know? And he says, well, we'll double it. And I said, well, which, but we'll put it through your sign, your sign on fee. Yeah. I says, why? I get taxed on that. And he said, no, we'll pay the tax on it. Yes. Something that can be done. I looked at me and he says, it can be done. And it wasn't, it wasn't for, to, it wasn't a ball breaker, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a case of trying to um, get around the tax man. It was done. The tax was going to get paid, but it, it was for basically get. In the days, it was to get the back page. They wanted to see. I was coming back to Celtic for a thousand pound a week, dropping wages. Yes, because I'm a Celtic support, and that was what they wanted to do it. And I said, fine, I, as long as I get money, you know, it's not a problem. Yeah, I didn't want any extra. I, I could put on for goals and all that. I didn't want that. See, I didn't want because. But see, you know, because a lot of boys were doing it, you yeah. get money per goal, and I'm saying, but that, that won't take it away from me because I'll no pass about it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I didn't want it, so yeah. I, I don't know. I, I want to be a player, so yeah. I could have done that. And then this first sign on film through in the tax it, and I said, well, you can sort that out in the gaffer. But it's nothing to do with the gaffer. It, absolutely nothing to do with him. Yeah. And that kept going through, and then we won the double. Come back for pre season, and it just says, you're not getting it. So you're you're now an unhappy Frank McIntyre. Listen, I went when they made it. when I was on the pitch, everyone saying I want to I miss my P three girls and all that. You know, yeah. they were coming up here. I didn't miss them at all. <laughs> <laughs> didn't miss were them. Were you going out with Jenny at that time? No, at that time, yeah. That, yeah. There. Uh, but and listen, it wasn't it. It wasn't that. It was it was um. It was just I just didn't want to. You know, it was one of them. I just didn't want to. Um, I couldn't. Uh, the, the trust was gone. You know, it was trust. It was, um, and I remember Jim, uh, Jim White. To be fair, Jim, he, he was the SUV. He caught me at the airport. I was sitting in the corner. I was in tears, Peter. Yeah. I didn't want to leave. I really didn't want to leave. Yeah. Did and, you... and that's where I could have went to Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal going to win the league. West Ham were getting relegated. I went to West Ham. I just didn't. I wanted to go back somewhere that I can be loved and. Yeah, I didn't have to go through or prove myself again. And Somewhere you were wanted, and and I knew them, and I knew I wouldn't get stuffed. And Just then, out of curiosity, did you sense though in the eighty nine season mm -hmm. that um, that Celtic were not going to be able to catch Rangers? Mm -hmm. Did you sense that as well? Was that? Yeah, but I thought they'd have bought. I thought they'd have bought on. I wouldn't have I wouldn't bother me, but then yeah, I thought they'd have brought. I mean, John Collins had good players. Yeah, you know they brought in so. It was just, it, that was after me, but it was, it was listen, it was, it was one of the, when I came back, I mean, I came back with Celtic, and just this, I wasn't fit, and Liam Brady says, look, we, I need to play you, we've only got Tommy Coyne. Yeah. And I'm going, well, okay, she said, give us an hour. And of course, it was torrential, plenty of Broomfield. Yeah. It's a horrible wee place, but great for them. Torrential rain all day, and I'm thinking, you're having a laugh, can you help me yeah. anymore? And we got there, and we're in this wee dressing room like this. And, uh, and I'm looking at the board, Peter, I thought we were playing Real Madrid. Liam's got all these things out and I'm going, I'm looking at Granty and Paul and John. We're playing Airdrie. And I'm going, we're effing playing Airdrie. He's been so this for. Yeah. Yes, he's just couldn't beat them. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And, uh, and Liam's like, and then Tommy, Tommy Craig started laughing because he knew what it was like. I went out and I hit the bar and Tommy scored, so we beat him. It was, it was good. Yeah. Um, it, it's... The reason why I say that part one's been great because <laughs> you've you've managed to name drop more people than Aye. anybody has in that period. I'm um, a popular guy, Peter. Yeah, you know this that. is exactly it. And, uh, I never thought we were actually going to get. Going to keep much yet? Well, don't worry, <laughs> we'll get there because <laughs> that's part two. Um, Frank, first part of it, magnificent. Uh, I am definitely going to do Frank McIverney part two um, because <laughs> the, sec <laughs> the second part is even better. Yes. Um, but for the moment. Thank you. Cheers, Peter. Thank you. <clears throat>